Uh, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. And with all the history here on Delmarva, there's sure to be a good ghost story or two. Oh, that's for sure. And I actually had a chance to not only hear one of those stories, but to visit the location that that story was about. And whether you believe in ghosts or not, this next tale is sure to raise a few hairs. It was a rainy Monday when I pulled into Marion Station. Fitting, really, because the tales I was about to hear sent shivers down my spine. The story starts in 2002, when Mindy Burgoyne was in search of a new house. I looked at every single historic house in Somerset County, and I couldn't find one I liked. And then the last day, when I had to pick one so that we could uh, have a settlement, this house came for sale, and it was empty. And so. Um, I came in um, after agonizing for weeks over a house to buy, and as soon as I walked through, I just knew I loved this house. It, it just had a great feeling about it. Unfortunately, that great feeling was short-lived. It wasn't long after moving into the 1892 Victorian-style home that things took a turn towards the unexplained. I think it was a couple of months. It wasn't right away. When we started getting things all in position, Odd things started to happen, and we just said they were odd, but then they started to be way more than odd. They were strange. Mindy recalls being in the basement with her husband. They heard the side door close. And footsteps overhead. But when they searched the house, nothing. We both heard it. So that was the first time we said, okay, both of us heard this, we know this happened. The strange occurrences didn't stop there. That we couldn't keep mirrors hanging on the back um, upstairs room. We couldn't, I mean, three or four mirrors fall off the wall and break. And the chandelier in there started swaying one day. Uh, my husband was watching it, and um, one of the globes came off with a lot of force. Um, so these things were very upsetting. One event eventually sent Mindy over the edge. Well, it was the last straw, and it, was the, it had to do with this plate. This is a little calendar plate from 1918, and it was sitting here just like this. And as I was walking from the kitchen into the dining room, I saw it flip off onto the sideboard, like someone just was right here and flipped it. Um, and it ended up breaking it in half, as you can see, and I was very disappointed, but I was also freaked out because of the suddenness of it. And I have this little plate, which was my grandmother's, and I didn't want anything to happen to it, so I came over and I took this one and put it in the china closet to protect it. Um, just like this, and you can see this door is glass, and it's, you know, curved glass, so we're very careful with the china closet to always lock it. And so I told my husband when I came down the next morning that that was the last straw. I can't take it anymore, this weird stuff, and we're moving. And then I told him what happened, and he said, yeah, you know, I thought something was up, because when I came downstairs, the door was up wide open. You know, you should be more careful and lock it. And I said, I did lock it. So that was the end. Was, then we put the house for sale. And so I called some realtor friends of mine and I put a for sale by owner sign in the front of the house and I said, well, you know, any one of you can have 3% if you bring me a buyer. And so they all started bringing buyers and one of the buyers came in and went upstairs and we thought they, we really thought this couple was going to buy. They were here for hours and she said, can I take one last look at the attic? And she came back down and she said to her husband, you know, that slate roof, there's cedar shingles under that. And so my husband said, well, how do you know there's cedar shakes? Under the, did you, could you see them through the... And he said, no, she said, no, I guess it was, was it that your father that is up there <laughs> talking to me? And so unfortunately, instead of just going, oh yeah, that's our father and having them buy the house, we both went, oh my, there's nobody up there. And then she looked at, she looked up the stairway and like she was looking at him and she said, okay, well, thanks very much and, and left. Eventually things got better. We, we had two different people we asked about, you know, how, how can we handle this? And one, one mystic said, you don't have to worry anymore because whatever's there doesn't want you to go. And nothing else is going to happen. And nothing ever did. But that doesn't mean family is lining up to stay over. Our adult children won't sleep in the back room. None of them will stay here when we're gone. As for who's roaming the halls, well, there's a few theories. But Mindy and her family like to think it's Vance Miles one of the house's original occupants, or should I say, current occupants. You know, is it Vance? That's who we used to say. My granddaughter used to talk to when she was three to somebody in the hallway. It's always the hallway and the stairs here in the back room. There's one little path where we experience things. And now she's older, you know, she says she used to see him, you know, it was a man. The person came to buy the house and saw it was a man. 
My husband has seen a man out of the corner of his eye. I don't ever see anything, but you know, it, I'm, who knows? Who knows if it's Van Smiles and maybe he's just here. I did have a medium try and um, talk to whatever was here. And she said, she said she talked to a man that just wants to take care of the place and doesn't want you to go. So we don't know. And I don't think you ever know, but my family tends to say it's Van Smiles. And that whole experience sparked Mindy's curiosity. She has written two books about haunted locations here on Delmarva. She also hosts ghost walks at some of those locations. Spooky. I don't know if I could stay there, friendly or not. It, when she was telling me the stories, that I was getting goosebumps. Really? Yeah. <laughs> How about that? And if you want to find out more about those ghost walks that Sean mentioned, you can visit our website, WBOC.com, and click on our picture at the top of the page. Well, something I do know for certain is friendly is our competition here on Delmarva Life. Who could forget this? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. oh, I clearly won that one. <laughs> but up next, I take on you, Sean Stryker, in our annual Halloween makeup challenge. What we're about to do is anyone's guess, including ours, you know? <laughs> um, I'm a little worried. And the challenge is don't stop there a little later. We're chunking pumpkins. Ooh, I can't wait for that. Don't worry, life. We'll be right back.